What's up, everybody? This is Gray Man here. How is everybody doing today? Hopefully, well. Uh, so, uh, I want to say first of all, I want to say thank you all to uh, who joined us last night on the uh, International Prepper Conference. It was truly intriguing. Uh, if you haven't seen that video yet, check it out. Uh, it was a great live stream. A lot of different perspectives from all around the world. Uh, I was uh, very happy with the turnout and uh, the way things planned out on that. That was a great live stream, and we we'll hope to do more of that down the road. Also, uh, a few other things. Uh, I'll be tomorrow night, 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll be live on the late night with Gray. We'll touch upon, uh, you know, the Prepper Conference, and we'll also touch on a bunch of other things that are going on uh, that have popped up into the airways and things like that. And uh, we'll kind of go over a few things and uh, show off a few things as well. So join me tomorrow night at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, on to the list, right? You guys know I love my list. Uh, you know, People always ask me, the way, the reason I generate these lists is basically from user feedback, uh, as I'm reading periodicals, uh, magazines, books, uh, other websites and stuff like that, and I come across this information and I'm like, you know what, this will make a great show idea. So these are things that I want to show with you, uh, share with you, because I think it's uh, very informative in the aspect of uh, these are things that you know need to have more attention drawn to them. So if you can, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already and set that bell notification. Truly appreciate that. All right, so moving on to the seven must-have weird survival items. I, and I feel that they're must-haves. And there's, uh, I, I've chosen seven of them myself. And of course, if you guys come up with anything that's outside of my seven, uh, and I do have one bonus one to add to this list at the end of this video, if you stay tuned to the entire video. So that'll be uh, something to look forward to. Uh, but I think these seven must-have weird survival items are pretty important in the aspect of what you can do with them and how to use them. Uh, and down the road, I plan on using uh, some techniques uh, once the weather changes and I'm back out in the uh, bush or woodland or outside, per se. Uh, I'm going to use and actually explain and show some of these techniques in action. So stop rambling, Gray, and let's get on to the list. All right, so number one on this list is disposable chopsticks. And I know people are like, man... You know, when you go out to eat uh, and you go to, let's say, a Japanese or some sort of uh, Asian restaurant and you get these chopsticks, a lot of folks will opt for the fork. Uh, unless you're very in tune to using chopsticks, some people opt for the fork and then they have these chopsticks or they order Chinese food uh, and they get chopsticks and they just use regular utensils. Well, don't throw these away. Find a box, put these chopsticks in because they can come in very, very handy. Uh, so basically, you know, outside of just being a utensil, uh, you know, you can break these things up for tinder uh, and throw them into your fire. Uh, you can also use them as a knife. Uh, and what I mean by that is by sharpening the end of them, they can be used pretty much as a weapon in regards to that. You can use a, uh, you know, a ways to sharpen them with your blade or whatnot. Uh, and like I said, you can also, if you want to make, like I say, a trap, you know, if you want to dig a small hole uh, with small game or something like that, you can sharpen the edges, put them down in there, lay some stuff across there, uh, and preferably you do this in a not a highly traveled path, but you guys get what I'm saying in a survival situation. You can make a bunch of spikes coming up, and when the animal comes across there on, on, the, uh, on the game trail, it may fall in and impale itself, and then you have dinner for the night. Moving on to number two, aluminum cans. Uh, you know, you see aluminum cans on the side of the road. Uh, you, 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 people, most people throw them away. People don't understand. You know, you know, they just think it's a disposable item, and whatnot. But you, uh, aluminum cans can come in helpful in many, many different ways. One is, and, I, and I'm going to do this on a like one of the little short videos that I do here this month. Is I'm going to take a, the the top. Uh, you know, the uh, the pull tab off the aluminum can and turn that into a fish hook. It's very simple and quite intriguing to use, but. You know, outside of taking that tab off and cutting it and making it into a fish hook, it does also have more uses. Uh, they can be cut to make uh, containers to boil water in. Uh, they can be used, to, uh, you know, to, as a cup to drink water if you cut it in half. You know, be careful with the sharp edges, of course. Uh, they can be create to make a small mini stove. Some people, you've seen people make little alcohol stoves out of aluminum cans as well. Um, and, and even the little pieces, you can use these little pieces uh, because aluminum cans, when you cut them or tear them, they can be very sharp. So you can use them for, you know, self-defense. Uh, you can use them for cutting things and stuff like that. It's not the most optimal, but it's still something to use the can for outside of its normal usage. Also, uh, you know, the bottom bottom of the can is very polished. You can use that for, let's say, a signaling uh, mirror or whatnot or some sort of reflective surface. Um, what else could you use that for? Uh, you know, one thing I did see, uh, God, what was it? I don't know if it was on Reddit or Pinterest. Turning a, a can, you can turn these cans into, and I think where I thought I had a note where it was. I do have it here somewhere. Let me see here. Uh, 
if you cut up if you cut the top of the can off line the inside with some honey and put some like bird seeds in there or bread or something like that in the bottom of the can you can trap birds with it and i've seen videos in action this being used uh secured on you know you, it secures it on the inside uh you know when the small bird kind of goes in and it, to go in for the bait it just can't get out uh, you know with the honey and stuff like that and it's, it's all kind of thing So, you know, if you're if you're really desperate for food, you can use a can to trap small birds uh, Any protein is better than no protein, correct? Uh, so those are just some uses for the aluminum can and I'm pretty sure there's a lot more that I'm missing But just to kind of get you guys on that path of, of train of thought of thinking about that All right, number three number three is a lot of, a lot of folks do this they'll, don't, they'll they'll get their old clothes You have either torn clothes clothes that you don't use anymore ripped clothes Whatever the case may be, these clothes have outlasted their shelf life, and you're going to toss them. You're either going to throw them in the trash, maybe donate them to a Goodwill or something like that. But broken or torn, old, tattered clothes can be used in many, many different uh, scenarios. Um, one, you can use pieces of those clothes to patch other clothes. Uh, you can use them, uh, you can remove the buttons, the zippers, and other uh, necessities off those clothing to repair your other clothing as well, or you know, use it to build other types of things. Uh, you can turn, uh, you can turn, uh, like I say, an old shirt into, uh, you know, you can use it as a bandage. You can use it as, uh, you can turn them into like little bags, little satchels. What else can you do with them? Uh, you can also make char cloth uh, out of, you know, cloth or char cloth out of some of these old clothes. Uh, I think I mentioned bandages. Let me see here. What else can you do? Uh, you can uh, take strips of those, uh, strips of those clothes and fashion them into like wicks, uh, you know, fuses. Uh, it can be, you know, like I said, converted into char cloth. I'm trying to think of anything else. Uh, and in worst case scenario, uh, you can use it as toilet paper. I know people are like, man, that's disgusting. But no, uh, it's better than using, let's say, the other alternatives. Let's say like a, a leaf that may be poison ivy if you're unfamiliar with the area or pine cones or whatever the case you may come across. But you kind of get the gist of it. So don't throw away these old clothes. They can be reused and repurposed for a lot of different other uses. Uh, hopefully this will kind of guide you guys. Some of you guys, folks that might have some old clothes laying around, tear them apart. Uh, and get them prepared for you know let's say patches and and, and strip them of their uh, the necessities or not necessities their accessories like the zippers and buttons uh, maybe the belt loops and stuff like that you can use this stuff beyond the means that it was designed for all right moving on to number four broken glass <laughs> and people like you know because just think about how much when you're out in the woods or you're on a trail or just in a park and stuff like that or you come across a broken window in an old building or whatnot, broken glass can be extremely useful for many purposes as well. Uh, you know, a lot of people are just willing to throw that, you know, they break something and they're willing to throw it away, not even having a second thought of it. Uh, but again, you can use broken glass for, you know, stuff like a weapon uh, in self-defense and stuff like that. You know, you've seen it probably on TV where they take that bottle and they break it off and they're like, yeah, and they're going to use it as a weapon. Uh, but you know it can be formed into other things you know I've seen people take glass and make arrowheads out of it you know what I mean if you can chip away at that you get like a little small stone and chip away at some of this glass and there's varying degrees of different types of glass that work better than others so kind of you know experiment with it uh, but you can do things with glass as well and you can also use certain parts of glass that have like a concave effect uh, I've seen people use like the bottom of like the thicker bottles uh, that were more prominent back in the you know 70s and 80s but uh, you can still find them uh, and they'll use them uh, to try to start fire, to try to, you know, focus beam. Uh, it's kind of like a magnifying glass, but you can use that uh, bottle that bottle half to kind of like, you know, focus some light on there. It's not perfect, but it's better than having nothing if you kind of get what I'm saying. Uh, but just think about the many uses that you can use with broken glass outside of just the ones that I'm talking about. All right, number five, and some of you guys are probably going to scoff and laugh at this, but they come in very, very handy. Uh, number five is going to be tampons. And I don't mean I don't mean the ones that have already been used and stuff like that. It's disgusting, uh, and not disgusting in the manner that it's just you know you don't want to use something like that. You want to use uh, you know I always tell people, not only pre uh, prepping tampons and stuff like that you know is useful for if they you know if they disappear off the shelf uh, you know feminine hygiene products are a big thing and a lot of people disregard that when they're talking about their preps other than the lady preppers out there and this is in their head. Uh, and after doing that video on on for women, you know, I've thought about a lot of different issues that you know that go beyond the things that I prep, things that I might need to prep for my daughter uh, or my wife or you know mother and so on and so forth, grandparents and stuff like grand grandmother and whatnot. But uh, believe it or not, tampons can be used to make a water filter. Uh, they're great at filtration water. Uh, you can use them for tinder. Uh, they can help stop uh, bleeding wounds, and they can even be be, be uh, 
speak, spit it out gray. They can even be used uh, as a cold compress. You take that, you dip it in some ice cold water and apply that as a cold compress as it absorbs the water and expands. So a lot of different uses for that as well, other beyond its traditional uses. All right, moving on to number six. Uh, number six is going to be a small pencil sharpener or a medium pencil sharpener, a pencil sharpener in general, one that's portable, lightweight, that you can throw in a bag or whatnot. Uh, pet people don't think about stuff like this. At least I feel they don't. You know, it's nice to have if you come across, you know, a box of pencils and you need to sharpen some pencils, right? Uh, but it also works for sharpening small sticks. Again, uh, you can use uh, your, your uh, you know what I'm trying to say, <laughs> your chopsticks and uh, your pencil sharpener and sharpen them that way if you don't have the blade on you. Also, the blade inside that uh, pencil sharpener can be removed from that and you can use that for small game and, and stuff because it has a nice sharp blade on there. A lot of different things you can use a pencil uh, sharpener for. Uh, you can use it, like I said, for building traps, uh, to make arrows. Um, like I said, you can use it to strip off wet bark. Uh, you know, you can uh, use it to, to get into that bark to get the dry inner shavings uh, for your tinder. So a lot of different uses. Uh, they can come in handy. Uh, these little pencil sharpeners, believe it or not, it's just something that some people overlook. Uh, and they may have li li uh, lying around the house uh, and don't realize how useful that thing could be uh, in a survival situation. So, yeah, number six, small pencil sharpeners. All right, moving on to number seven. Right before we get to that bonus uh, bonus uh, addition to the list, right? Uh, and hopefully, like I said, if you've gotten some value out of this video so far, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Thumbs up. Truly appreciate that. YouTube loves to suppress channels like this and content like this. They don't want you to be prepared. They don't want you to have these ideas in your head in regards to survival and preparedness. So anything and everything, all the interaction, the thumbs up, the comments, they all help. And uh, I'll get to the comments here in a second. Number seven is going to be lollipops or suckers or however you want to call them, however you, you, know, you call them in your neck of the woods. Uh, but lollipops outside of it's just a nice sweet treat to have you know in, in a shift scenario or a worst case scenario uh, but you know because it'll boost your sugar uh, you know to help you get maybe through some physical task you know it's just a nice little boost like you know as told people that you can use honey you know a couple spoonfuls of honey will also boost that but you know having hard candy also it has a long shelf life if stored properly but suckers uh, <laughs> I know it sounds crazy saying suckers at least when it comes out of my mouth it does uh, but again, like I said, if kept dry, they can last for quite some time. Uh, they'll make a great barter item as well. Uh, and even better, you can you can take that sucker with the stick on it, flip it around, and you can actually use that with the sucker stick pointing out and use it as a weapon in a soft tissue area, let's say like the eyes, throat, and things like that. So you have to think beyond the realm of things. Expand your what you see in this little small piece of candy uh, you know, on a stick and think about, wow, I could use this for that or this. Um, you can use it uh, for so many different things. You can even heat it up and melt it down and uh, make a sticky substance and kind of, you know, add that to sweeten some water up or something like that. You can take a piece of candy, drop it in your water bottle, let that dissolve a little bit inside there and kind of add flavor to your water. And you're getting also sh sugar uh, in your system as well. So you kind of see there's a multi-purpose when it comes to uh, the suckers or lollipops per se. Um, anyways, so like I said, you can grasp, grasp one of those suckers in the palm of your hand with the stick pointing out through your fingers and you can like i said you can strike an intruder in his neck and his eyes his ribs again the groin area uh I guarantee you a, a nice solid sucker uh punch uh, with your force behind it it can make you can stop an intruder you'd be shocked at the things that you can use to protect yourself all right so moving on to the bonus my bonus on this list and uh, this one is i feel is extremely important and it has many uses as well uh so bonus for this list today is going to be cork. Uh, a lot of people, you know, and it, what it really sucks this day and age is that the cork is not as prevalent as it used to be uh, in regards to bottles and stuff like that. But if you can either buy cork in quantity, uh, and I mean like the cork that you would find in a bottle or whatnot, if you can, if you have just pieces of cork or whatnot, a lot of people just, just they, they take the cork and they throw it away and think nothing of it. But cork, uh, like I say, it's, it's harder to find these days on screw top bottles. Uh, but having corks in various different sizes is very beneficial. Uh, they can be used as bobbers for fishing. Uh, they can be broken up for mulch. Uh, they can be soaked in alcohol. You know, you get uh, some 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 alcohol. Even if you use grain alcohol or you know some 151 Bacardi or whatnot, uh, and you and you can take a jar and you take all the cork in there, pack it full of uh, pack the jar full of cork, fill that with alcohol. I prefer to use rubbing alcohol. 
uh, the 90% uh, isopure alcohol. It's a lot more flammable. Um, and take all that, put the alcohol in there, let the cork soak that up, you know, for several days or just leave it in there until you need it. Uh, then you can pull it out and it, that makes that cork a lot better for a fire starter uh, because it's going to absorb the alcohol and store that kind of inside there. But like I said, I keep them in the jars or whatnot. And then once I take one out of the jar, and if I'm going to take one on a hike with me, um, usually I'll... Uh, I'll take a, I don't know if you guys have a vacuum sealer or, you know, food savers and whatnot. I'll take a few of those and take the oxygen out so it doesn't have that, uh, so the alcohol doesn't evaporate from that because over lots of heat and stuff like that, eventually you'll have some evaporation. It won't be as effective. Um, so cork, uh, like I said, many purposes. I've used cork for bobbers before. Even as a child growing up, we used cork right on our fishing line. It's easy to play with if you have a small knife or a multi-tool to poke holes through. Uh, you can use it to, to if you need a, like, you can pack something in there and make it as something you can use for flotation. There's just a lot of uses for cork in general. So that's my bonus for the uh, for this list here. So again, if you've gotten any value out of this, uh, please give it a thumbs up. Second of all, if what kind of weird uh, survival items would you guys add to this list? I'd love to hear back from you. If you can drop that stuff down in the comments, I'd love to hear your thoughts and your ideas and weird survival items. And I don't mean stuff like, uh, you know, things that we we take for commonplace, you know, like duct tape and glue, uh, safety pins. Uh, and all those basic things that I've gone over before. I'm talking about like weird items that you think people would not think of, uh, you know, on a on a survival situation. Things that might be around the house, things that you might find out in the trash or on the side of the road. Tell me see your thoughts. Drop them down in the comments and I look forward to reading those and, and interacting with you folks. Uh, so that about wraps up this video, folks. I think that's uh, pretty much a decent list to get you started and to kind of plant that seed and kind of make you think what else around the house might be something that's weird but can be used in a survival situation. Uh, so hopefully, like I said, that'll get the juices flowing and move on from there. So again, this wraps up that, that, that list. I want to say thank you all for joining me on this video as well, and I'll see everybody tomorrow night, 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Late Night with Gray. Look forward to seeing you all there, and we have lots to talk about. All right, this is Gray Man. I'm out. I'll see you guys on the rebound. God bless.